Okay, on the 17 HMR, if you can't get your bolt back in, there's something real critical i got to show you that stops you from getting the bolt back in. If you look at the bolt right here, and you'll notice that uh, that little piece right there. Now, when they made this rifle, it was sticking out a little bit for me. And I noticed that I couldn't get the bolt back in because of it. So that's got to be flush right there. And then this has got to be set in this position. The way you set this is, is if you say you fire it or something accidentally when you put the bolt back in. Um, the way you reset it is you push up on this right here. Down on a hard surface. And then you pull this. You pull this this direction and it will sit right there. See that? Now, a lot of people think the reason they can't get their bolt in is because of the trigger. Uh, they're thinking they're thinking it's getting hung, hung up right, here, right in here because you have to pull the trigger to get the bolt to go forward. So right inside here, a person would think that they would have to do something to pull down the trigger a little bit to get it to go forward, but that's not so. Another thing is... These have got, where the ejector is right here, these have got nylon rails. And uh, I don't know if you, you can see in there, probably can't see in there. But anyway, there's nylon rails inside here and the ejectors right here. The nylon rails go from here to here. And if you notice, your rails, uh, they can get chewed up a little bit in there, especially on this end. Not this end, but this end here. Now that's normal because when you take out the bolt, you have to press fire. And not only do you have to press fire, but you have to wiggle it a little bit. And when you wiggle it, uh, the nylon plastic that's in the back of this rail right here gets chewed up. So somebody might think, oh, it's the rail. Oh, it's the rail that's stopping it from going forward. Not so. It's actually the bolt right there you got to make sure you put that back in. That's got to be flush. It likes to hang out a little bit. And I noticed that when this rifle was new, it was hanging out just a little bit. Um, another thing I wanted to tell you guys uh, to know to know how your extractor is doing for extractor health. Not the ejector, but this is the extractor on the bolt here. Is what you do is you take an empty cartridge. Excuse me for a second. Put an empty cartridge in here. Okay, to know if the extractor is doing good, you'll notice that the shell, you notice that the empty shell is pinned in really flat. See how flat that is and it's holding it in really good? That's how you know that your uh, extractor is going to do good for you. Now, if you notice on the extractor, If you notice on the extractor right in there, there's a little gap right there. You're going to have about 12 thousandths of an inch gap. So it's not always touching the rim like people think. But if you need to, and there's a problem with it, you could bend that down just a little bit. So this is how you can tell if your extractor is doing good. Because the, the shell is seated and it's held together really nice. And then here's your firing pin right here. That strikes the cartridge. See that? So that's one thing I do for bolt action rifles to make sure that uh, the extractor is doing good as I do this. And one of the things that guys are making a mistake of too is you don't have to take off this shell. The shell that holds the extractor and stuff, it's, it's under spring tension. And when you take this off too many times to clean it, it loses its tension and its springiness, which means this will open up on you right here. And then also the extractor might move that direction, and you don't want that. So I wouldn't mess with this shell right here that, that has your extractor on it. I wouldn't mess with that at all. Now inside the firing pin channel, 
you don't really need much in here. Maybe just a tiny bit of oil, but uh, but this does pretty good. And then here's the here's what strikes it here. This big block right here. This hammer strikes the firing pin, and it's under tension, so it comes forward. It com comes forward from here to here, and it's under pretty good tension actually. It's pretty strong. So your ammo. You have to remember something. If your if your firing pin is in good shape, like mine, um, rimfire ammo isn't perfect. This one's striking really good, really good and deep. So, it's it's not the problem with the rifle; it's the ammunition. Because if I inspect my firing pin, see how nice that firing pin is, nice and flat and deep. If I inspect my firing pin under high magnification, I'll notice that it's a, it's a little dirty on there, but it's I'll notice that it's nice and flat, and there's uh, there's no problems with it because I don't dry fire rim fires, so I don't have any problems with it. A lot of times it's the ammunition. So Hornady XTP and stuff like that. Sometimes they have a little bit more. That don't go off than like your CCI, but that's just be there. It's a good round. It's just that they're mass produced and they're cheap. Um, when you get 17 HMR for ten dollars for fifty or even less than that, what you'll notice is there'll be maybe just a couple more um, shells that don't go off compared to like your CCI. And it's common in the rimfire world. Everybody knows that CCI is kind of known for you know, for the rim getting set off and stuff like that for good charges, especially in pistols and stuff. But that's not to say that Hornady's bad. It's just that it's been my experience shooting head-to-head -head with CCI. That CCI is just a little bit better, but, of course, the price is a little higher. So nothing wrong with Hornady, but uh, CCI just seems to really work with this rifle. Um uh, you know, setting off that charge in that rim there. So, and that's the problem you get with rim fires. So, don't always just assume that there's something wrong with the gun. Um, for newbies or new people, they always think that it's not. It's it's a it's the nature of rim fire. So, you're going to get a few duds. So, but anyway, I thought I'd share that with you so you don't struggle. You know, with uh, the same struggle that I had when I first got this. Now, another thing about the rail here is you can put a dot sight up here. I know it looks kind of funny, but you could put a single a single dot sight right here. It'll look kind of strange, but it actually works. So you don't necessarily have to, you don't necessarily have to have a full rail uh, to have the dot sight work because this this gun has absolutely no recoil, and when you don't have any recoil, your dot sight is going to be secure and it's not going to move. So you're not going to have to worry about, you know, you're constantly adjusting your windage and elevation and stuff like that. But dot sights are nice. If you have a 5 MOA dot, which means 5 inches at 100 yards, um, that would mean if you have like a pop can, which is 2.5 inches wide, um, you would basically put the dot over the can and if you're kind of centered you'll have a big circle like this over the can you can kind of figure it out and and uh, get nice and centered and hit a pop can at 100 yards with this thing with the dot sight and what that means is that if this was used for defense I see no problem with this getting out to 300 yards and it does have 22 long rifle ballistics even at uh, a couple hundred yards which means that uh, this thing can be used uh, for defense. It, it's not not the best cartridge in the world, but it it definitely uh, it definitely has a lot a lot of good energy as like your 22 long rifle out to like two 250 yards. I don't have my card on me right now, but I got a card where I wrote down my velocities. Um, but anyway, don't underestimate the 17 HMR. I mean, 
even though on soft targets it's got low penetration there are some full metal jacket loads for this rifle and uh hornady xdp they're made to blow up but there there are some game point um type ammo for this like cci and they don't explode immediately but they go through a little bit and then they explode so so you have to just kind of test your ammo there's ammo uh for penetration and then there's ammo that explodes typically your nylon tips are meant for exploding rapidly right away whereas the full metal jacket and the soft point uh will kind of go through quite a bit first and and then gradually expand and tumble um tumble like a 556 or a 223 like when it hits something it'll flip upside down and sideways and stuff because small bullets with high velocities are unstable and you'll get a yaw even though they're not hollow points you'll get like a yaw where the bullet goes in and it just kind of spirals around in circles and stuff like that but anyway i hope i could have helped you guys with this uh 17 hmr problems with uh getting the bolt back in so hope you guys are doing well and uh we'll talk to you again